All right. Now, we've learned how to create subsets. Let's walk through just a little bit more of this, okay? If I start off with a set with one element, I can create two subsets. I can take nothing, or I can take one element. On the other hand, if I have a set with two elements, I can take nothing, or I can take one element, or I can take them both. And here you see I have four subsets. If I have three elements to begin with, creating subsets, I can take nothing. Or I can take one element, that would uh, be three ways. Or I can take two elements, and I could write this as uh, A, B, A, C, or B, C. Or if I had wanted to, I could have taken a look at this and seen that the other two elements are B, C, and just written that there. The other two elements are A, C, and the other elements are A, B. Could have done it that way. And then you can see A, B, and C. If I wanted to do it, okay, there are eight uh, elements there. If I wanted to do uh, four elements, you can see that at each juncture things are doubling, okay? At each juncture things are doubling. So if I want to write it down sort of as a chart, I can say a number of elements in a set, okay, and a number of subsets, okay. The number of elements in a set, if I have one element, I have two subsets. If I have two elements, I have four subsets. Three elements, eight. Four elements would be 16. And I can say that if I had n elements, well, how would I look at that? Well, again, this is sort of double the two, right? This is double the four, right? Okay. This is double the eight. So you could look at this and you could say, hmm, well, this is a two to the first power, and this is two to the second power, and this is two to the third power, and this is two to the fourth power. So this one should be 2 to the nth power. And in fact, we can say that a set with n elements has 2 to the nth power of subsets. This is a nice little result and allows us uh, to do a lot of work uh, with cardinality. Now, in another way, we need to talk about uh, another concept here in which we just deal with uh, the idea of what a whole number is. And we're going to say that um, um, each set possesses possesses a property that describes um, how many um, elements are in the set. That property, okay, is the whole number. Okay. Now, when we talk about the set of whole numbers, the set of whole numbers is that set of numbers 
which can describe, which can, for any set, describe how many elements are in a set, or particularly in a finite set. So, uh, the set of all numbers are those values which can describe how many elements are in a finite set. Now, this is why the whole numbers are a little different from the counting numbers. Now, when we start counting, okay, for example, here's my uh, set A, all right, and here I start one, two, three, four, all right, and so you can see it's easy for me to count one, two, three, four. And four, uh, as you can see, is a value that describes how many is in that set. If I had uh, made them to say A, B, C, and D, you could still see that I could go one, two, three, and four and count how many are in the set. And so we would say that the number in set A is 4. That is, its cardinality is 4. Okay. Now, you can uh, see 4 as a whole number. And in fact, our set of whole numbers okay, turns out to be this set. We call it set W. And 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, notice the ellipsis right there. The ellipsis tells us that it continues on in like manner and keeps on going. Okay. Now, do we actually um, use all of these numbers in counting? And the answer is no. Uh, right here, this number is not used in counting. Okay. Um, this describes how many elements are in an empty set. So zero doesn't mean nothing, but it means that there are no elements in an empty set. Okay, an empty set contains no elements, or an empty set contains nothing, but uh, and uh, the zero, uh, the number that describes that nothing is zero. It's a fine line. You've got to be very careful in how you use it. All right. But when we start counting elements, we always start counting with one, and then start, you know, and continue on in that manner. The whole numbers are uh, tell us. How many elements can be found in a set? And zero is a possibility. Now, what is then uh, the uh, way we compare uh, two sets then? Okay, because here I've got this. Um, I've got this set here, all right? And so I want to describe uh, the process of comparison. And we've already said that comparison is uh, pretty much intrinsically a greater than, less than uh, type of idea. So we want to think about terms of, uh, of greater than and less than uh, type of ideas, okay? And so let's just start off with two sets, A, as being 1, uh, 3, and 7, and B as being um, 
A, B, C, and D. Now, if you remember, okay, right now we don't have um, a subset type of idea here, do we? Okay. I can't construct A from B. So A is not a subset. So I can't use a greater than or less than comparison there, all right? But I can talk about A and B in terms of a one-to-one -one correspondence, or the fact that I can't put them into one-to-one -one correspondence. Or I could say this, I can place A in a one-to-one -one correspondence with a proper subset of B. So here A uh, is placed in a one, two, one. Let me write that out. One, two, one correspondence. this mean? This means that B has something left over, doesn't it? B has something left over. This means that A is less than B, or, or not A is less than B, but the number in A is less than the number in B, or that the number in B is greater than the number in A. And so I can say if A is placed in a one-to-one -one correspondence with a proper subset of B, then I can say that the number in A is less than the number in B. Now, how would we write this uh, is less than, okay, the number in A is less than the number in B. Some people have referred to this as sort of the alligator, okay, actually we'll just use less than right there, and not less than or equal to, and uh, do you see how this is the little one, so it's less, and this is the bigger, uh, bigger end, so that's more, and so the number in A is less than the number in B, and uh, come, uh, the other way you can say it is the number in B is greater than the number in A, and in fact, uh, I can write it as the number in B is greater than the uh, number in A. This idea here, greater than and less than, as a set idea. You have kids and they are playing with toys, uh, particularly, say, little boys and cars, okay? So you give uh, one boy three cars and another boy four cars. Well, watch what happens. Okay, the boy with three cars is going to try to get another car. Why? Because the other boy has more. How do they how do they see this? Well, they automatically see this pairing up idea. They can see that as uh, in a one to one correspondence that uh, Jimmy over here has more than Billy. That if you put all of them up against each other, uh, Jimmy would have some cars left over. So this intrinsic, built-in idea of more is uh, something that we're able to uh, uh, sort of express as a set idea. Okay, now, uh, we can say, um, uh, 
basically greater than and less than are just simply rearrangements of the same kind of expression. You can see that uh, I could say that uh, if A is placed in a one-to-one -one correspondence with a proper subset of B, then I could say that the number in B uh, is uh, greater than uh, the number in A. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, they're equivalent definitions. Okay. Um, what is another way I could put it? I could say if A is less than B, then B is greater than A. And similarly, if B is greater than A, then A is less than uh, B. So these are equivalent statements, and we need to uh, just recognize uh, they're somewhat axiomatic. We can't really define one as more basic than the other. Okay. So, uh, what kind of um, things here? You can see this, all right. I need to express the number in A and the number in B here. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually uh, find a way to count. And so we're going to uh, look at this process of counting. Now, because I want to express how many are in there, okay, so I need a way to express and so I have a subset, uh, a set n, which I call the natural numbers or counting numbers. And these counting numbers have a particular order to them. Okay? So the counting numbers are an ordered set. Okay? Counting numbers are an ordered set. They start with one, and then you add one each time. Okay? Now, the counting numbers as an ordered set allow us to do some things. I can't to count, okay? I place the elements of a set in a one-to-one -one correspondence with a subset of the counting numbers. Let's call it a beginning. subset of the counting numbers. Do you see that for set B, I can start off here, okay? And it doesn't matter whether I uh, do um, uh, D with some other, I just can't go outside here. 3 has to be the next one in consideration, and then 4 has to be the next one taken in consideration. So it's always going to be this order, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is why we teach our children to count. Invariably, we have them count in a particular order. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And can you see that by the time, when I stop there, all right, uh, this highest value that is in my uh, you know, the ending value, uh, the value that I stop with when I have finished my one-to-one -one correspondence is the value that expresses the cardinality of the set. That is, the number in set B is 
four. Okay. When I take a look here at a number in A, all right, I can also do a one-to-one -one correspondence with this, and I would end set A at three. So the number in set A is three. And I can say that three is less than four. So I can say three is less than four simply by the idea of a counting principle. So when I'm counting, all right, I'm going to place my, the elements of the set in a one-to-one -one correspondence with the beginning elements of uh, the uh, counting numbers. And I can say, yeah, then I can compare these uh, two sets numerically, not just physically as to what elements are left or uh, left over, but I can compare them numerically. So I can say that the number in A is 3, the number in B is 4, and the number in A is less than the number in B.